Hi everyone. Hi there. So, welcome to our channel. Welcome to our channel. I'm just going to repeat what my wife is <laughs> saying. So don't mind me. So many of you have been asking us to make YouTube videos because you want to see more of us. So here we are. So this is our first video that we're going to post on YouTube. On, uh, the topic is going to be our journey towards our wedding, wedding day. day. Yes. How everything went for us, our experience, the uh, experiences, the difficulties, the good times, uh, yeah, the difficult part, and uh, the fun part. So yeah. everything around it. Everything, because it was a very interesting journey, especially because it was 2020. Yes. You know, Corona hit us like in the beginning of the year, and then all of the everything that we had planned had to change. And Rito said lockdown. Yeah, he did in March. So we're gonna go like go through from January till June, like by month, how the things, how everything was uh, was going. Um, so in January, let's start with our surprise proposal. Yeah, that was fun. Yeah, really, really. That fun. was fun. That was I enjoyed myself planning this whole. Uh, I had no clue. Moment. So that was amazing. So uh, the whole idea was to get something else to uh, GH Madeline Ghana for her to do a surprise um, photo shoot for my wife and I where I'll be doing the well, proposal. the photo shoot was not a surprise. I knew we were having Okay, that. yeah, the photo shoot was not a surprise, but in that was a surprise element and that was... <laughs> the element was this. <laughs> so we came back to the Netherlands in uh, January and the wedding planning had officially started. Uh, well, started before did yeah, you start like, before Ghana? we did yeah, we I did know. that's why we went to ghana right because we yeah, went to too. buy some things actually yeah, so yeah. we already knew we were yeah. you know but like officially for the whole world it started in january after yeah. the proposal after the proposal yeah um so we had had done the proposal or he had done the proposal we came back and then we started planning um we had a venue that was booked already mm -hmm. Um, and we were going to do our traditional wedding on a Thursday. Yeah, which was going to be on the 23rd. The 23rd of July. Yeah. And we we're going to do our white wedding on, on the, the, on the 25th, 25th, Saturday. Yeah. Uh, we were going to do the wedding in church. I go to the Church of Pentecost, Holland, Amsterdam. PIWC. Represent Praise Valley Temple, Baraka Temple. <laughs> And so we were going to do the wedding in church and then have a reception and we had already booked the reception hall. So that's kind of like a basic outline for weddings uh, here in the Netherlands. But then as we were planning that, you know, February was just a ma month of planning and in March, for February we heard there was something called Corona. Yeah, like, here in the Netherlands. Yeah. But then in March, we just had locked down. <laughs> so then locking the country down. So uh, a lot of weddings that were planned in April and May had to be cancelled be canceled, yeah. because people couldn't get together anymore. And everyone was kind of uh, afraid because we didn't know what Corona was. So that for us was like a moment of... <laughs> what are we going to do? What are we going to do? I, I remember on my birthday, 23rd of March, that's when he issued the lockdown or a week before my birthday, he issued the lockdown. Yeah. So we couldn't do anything um, and it was kind of like a wait and see. But so babe, what did we decide what, uh, regarding our wedding? So um, March lockdown, mm -hmm. uh, well, we didn't know uh, how to go around it, but we said that we are not, people were canceling their weddings, but we said they to ourselves, to. yeah, they, they had, had to, to. but uh, we said ourselves, we are not going to cancel it uh we are going to wait and see how the situation is going to uh, turn out yep so uh for us it was like wait and see mm -hmm. but we didn't want to cancel our wedding yeah. because we wanted it to happen this year yeah. whether it's going to regardless if it's going to be with two or three people or whatever we wanted to get married this year Yo, so that's that was married. one of the main reasons that we didn't cancel our wedding yeah and then uh in april yeah, yeah. april was the same the like same we situation didn't know anything, but we then didn't know anything we had to kind of start making a plan for if this was going to stay you yeah. know the same so we had to look for different 
venues. Yeah. Can I uh, talk? Yeah. In April, that's where uh, with the press conference, they said that we can come together yeah. with 30 people. Yeah. Yeah. 30 people. I so. So uh, I started, we started looking around uh, for different locations yeah. that will suit uh, a, an occasion for 30 people. An intimate, yeah, wedding an intimate so. wedding for 30 people. So. Yeah. So uh, we were doing that. And yeah. yeah. So that's when we were like, okay, if it's going to be 30 people, we need a smaller hall because you definitely can't have 30 people in, a, in an enormous hall for 500 people. So uh, we started looking around and found some different halls that were smaller that we could have the wedding in. Um, at a certain point, we even had to think, are we just going to do the wedding um, in the church? Um, with 30 people and call it a day, but I didn't want that. That was personally because our church is very big. I just didn't want a small amount of people in an ex extremely large um, hall. I thought yeah. that would not be, I wouldn't even feel good walking into that. So uh, we were not doing that. And uh, we were looking for different halls that were, mm -hmm. were, were smaller. So we came up, we found a few, we were discussing it with our wedding planner and then we were like, okay, we're going to do our traditional wedding on the Thursday still and then do um, the wedding on Saturday in a smaller hall. Remember the Fondelkerk? Okay, we can show them. So we had that hall that was a very beautiful hall. Was that for the 30 people? Or yeah, for 30. Yeah. For 30 people, very, um, it gives you kind of like, how do you describe that? A lux, is it a luxury? Not a luxury, it's more uh, an, old, an castell, uh, Yeah, castle-like. Yeah. It's a castle-like, um, I like that vibe, uh, but it was very beautiful thir for 30 people. And then we also ha had Huizen Frankendal. Yeah, and then we discovered that there is something called Zoom. <laughs> yeah. So Zoom came along and uh, everything that we had to do uh, uh, and all the visitation and the location has had to go through Zoom. <laughs> yeah, we so, visited them via Zoom, yeah. Yeah, so uh, <laughs> the people from the location uh, gave us a tour around the place uh, mm -hmm. through uh, Zoom mm -hmm. and that gave us an idea uh, about how the whole... Uh, uh, location uh, look like exactly oh yeah and there was another hall actually the one in demon that was also yeah. a very beautiful that is for location. the 50 people Shame. i don't know when it was when we were looking for frankendal yeah, and then so uh, last week of april that's when they said that we you can have a, a wedding with 50 people or yeah, am i, I mistaken somewhere around, the line. around 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 somewhere along the line yeah. but before may though they increase the number to, to 50, 50 yeah. people so then we yeah. had to also look for a different location mm -hmm. which will suit 50, 50 people. people but then we were still not sure if the wedding can go on this year because oh yeah of course i forgot my dad my dad he was in ghana, was in ghana. Ah, yeah. and uh, all flights were yeah. cancelled so nobody yeah. could fly so he was locked in ghana yeah. and i could not get married without my father no and no 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 bride can actually so i was like even if we go ahead and plan this and book a venue it depends on the presence of my dad so we were whether he can this, come or not <laughs> yeah walking on eggshells throughout the entire process mm. but we just went ahead and planned something because hey you have to have something to hold on to fate yeah yeah, fate. I think one of the one of the most most uh, um, beautiful thing yeah. through this whole thing was that her mom, uh, who is born on Saturday, because I'm also born on Saturday. So that's important. Yes, I mean I have to share it. It's a Saturday thing, so we had to call the Sats. <laughs> so she was like, um, "You have to plan this. Uh, have faith." Uh, oh, yo. My mom it is going to me. come on and your dad is going to fly from Ghana to Holland and uh, to and uh, be on the occasion yep. uh, for the wedding so just go ahead and plan the whole wedding I'm telling you, my mom and your dad is going to be here amazing like so, the faith she had was amazing she had all her her friends yeah her, her my aunties right they were all praying for us for the wedding and declaring that it was going to happen. 
like every single every week they had mm-hmm. a day and they were praying and i was like how is this going to happen and she just knew it was going to happen how she didn't care but she knew it was going to come on so she thought and she was like continue the planning yeah and uh, when that day come we all yeah it will go on so shout out to my mom and my aunties i love you so much <laughs> so that's what happened <laughs> So on my birthday, the 6th of May, I got a present from the government which says that you can have an occasion for 100 people and we were really, really excited because we went from 30 to 50 and now 100. So we can, we, we can invite more all of the family members to uh, join us yes. and, and still 100 was good. Okay, not good, but okay to... Was, to, to yeah. 100 is okay 50, to uh, 50, 50 50 to uh, do this uh, beautiful uh, ceremony for us. So we were willing, we were going to go with 100 people. Mm-hmm. I'm very happy about that. I was so happy because um, as we were, mind you that as we were planning and we had 30 people, 50 people, 100, we had to divide those numbers by two families. <laughs> so 30 people, 50, 50. <laughs> and if I tell you... <laughs> There was a lot of stress involved because oh, my family was like, the bride's family always overrepresents. So she should have a little bit more than the groom's family. And then it was like, no, because of Corona, we have to split 50 50. And then they were like, my side of the family was like, no, we need more. And they were like, no, we need more. So that kept on going for, for a while. So in June, Time was starting to get closer. Uh, my dad was still not back from Ghana, and we had no fixed planning for how we were going to do, how we're going to organize the wedding day itself. Well, what I can say that um, with the flight attendant, uh, they were saying that in May, um, the flights are going to fly. There and were possible. There were possible possibilities, and then May uh, did. Everything was cancelled and then they uh, moved it to 1st of July, no, June. June, they were also saying that June uh, flights are going to uh, fly. And, and I have to give you some background information because yeah. it was not just ordinary flights, but they were going to get, uh, they were repatriation flights for uh, Dutch citizens in Ghana. So that gave us some hope because, of course, my dad has Dutch nationality um, that they would bring him can you tell us a little bit about uh, how everything went for you in getting your dad uh, back to Holland oh, that was a whole th- another ball game so I got informed I think like a week prior to it wasn't even a week it took some days. like it was like a few days it was like three days before the flight was gonna take off from Ghana mm-hmm that's when I got the information that there was a repatriation flight yeah. that was going to come to Holland. And that was like my only chance to get my dad to Holland for the wedding. So I was calling the embassy. I was uh, I was calling KLM. I was mailing uh, one of the bosses. I, I uh, called the travel agency here in Holland that my dad always uses to travel to Ghana. They referred me to KLM. KLM referred me to the embassy um, of Holland in Ghana. And then I got some information. uh, And apparently they had a whole program that was set up for Dutch citizens in Ghana uh, with the Ministry of Foreign Affairs. So um, I had to fill my dad's details before 5 p.m. that day. Like as I'm speaking, it was like 3 p.m. or something. So I'm calling my dad to tell him, Dad, your your plane is going to come. You're gonna say you're gonna be on a plane in three days' time, so you have to arrange yourself that. And then was um, it three days? I thought it was. It was like than three that. days. So he had, okay. uh, yeah, three days. Because it wasn't sure. I remember that you told me that when you uh, wrote the letter or you sent the mail, uh, they were going to give you a confirmation if your dad is going to be part of it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So when I uh, filled him in. And I also got a number. He was the last one, right? Yeah, he was one of the last persons to board the plane. I got a number that was like a direct contact person who was in charge of arranging the repatriation flight. Mm -hmm. And they told me that they were going to do their possible best. 
Then they gave me the mail address of the person who actually arranges the tickets for the plane. So I was mailing this person back and forth. What do you need from me? He's like, okay, give me passport details, give me this, give me that. And I was sending this, those things to him. And then at the end of the mailing conversation, he says to me, I have to confirm to you one day before the flight yeah. takes off, if your dad is on the plane. So then I had done everything. I just had to leave it in the hands of God and wait till one day before the flight. And if he could be on the flight. Um, and I one day before the flight, I still got no information. So I texted him again. He was like, I'm going to, as soon as I know, I'm going to let you know. So I still didn't know, but my dad was like, oh, I'm going to be on the plane. Don't worry. He just knew he was going to be on the plane. And I just still hadn't gotten the confirmation. So I couldn't say for sure, right? So he even went um, to Kotoka. He got the information like on the day of the, uh, the day that the plane was going to take off. Yeah. And then he went to Kotoka and then they arranged everything for him and then he came. But then the plane, yeah, he came. <laughs> so that's how it went. So he arrived and we were happy. And then it was like, okay, now I'm really getting married. Yeah, so he came a month before the wedding. Yeah, was he came it? ending of July. Uh, ending of June, sorry. Yeah. And the wedding was ending of July. So, uh... Yeah, your dad uh, uh, came and that gave us the confidence like the confidence that this whole wedding is going to uh, go on and it's going to happen. Mm -hmm. And then also in June, uh, the government uh, lifted the ban a little bit and said that you can uh, hold a wedding of a maximum uh, 200. No, they didn't give you they didn't give an, uh, uh, a limit. They said that the capacity of yeah. your, oh, yeah. the, the hall, hall and with uh, social distance with de yeah, determines how many people you can uh, have. have in a room. Yeah. So uh, based on uh, our hall, we could hold 200 people with social distance. So yeah. we were able to uh, have a wedding with 200 people. That was amazing. And, and in that, there were, there were some challenges. Uh, for us, like my wife said, planning a, a wedding in this whole corona is just up and down, up and down, up and down, not knowing um, what the government is going to say. Yeah, I want to add something. Yeah. Because that's exactly how it went. When my dad came and we were discussing our plan with him, so the plan was to have the wedding um, on Thursday and yeah. then a traditional Thursday and then a, a white wedding on Saturday. He was like, if it's, it's Corona now, why do we, you know, um, let people travel twice if we can have the wedding on one day? So then it was like, okay, possibly we can have our traditional and our white wedding at one location, which is the venue that we chose for 500 people because they have a lot, they have an extra hall. So we used, um, we used that venue, the extra hall for the traditional and then the grand hall for the white wedding and it had a, a dress up room for me and my husband so it actually worked out perfectly uh, we almost cancelled our wedding venue because we really thought we were going to have a wedding for um 50, 50 people. people so we chose the venue in demon to have our wedding and we were going to do a wedding outdoor remember that yeah we're gonna do an outdoor wedding but then i was like almost I actually told the guy i want to cancel the wedding venue and then i retracted in that same week so we kept that's the when venue. Your dad, uh, came. yeah that's when my dad came so it was like on the bar border when my dad was not coming then i was like okay i have to cancel this venue and go for the one in demon but then I got the information that he was coming and then all everything happened and then I told him, okay, he's coming, so we're going to keep the hall. And we used one venue, one day, to have two weddings. Yeah. And so I told my wife that this day, uh, putting the three events together, major event, in one day is going to be a tiring day for... It was just two major the, the, huh? It was two major events. Three. You have the, the tradition, the, the church service, and the reception. But the reception is not an event. 
It's an event. It's a party. Yeah. It's in a party in an event. <laughs> <laughs> Shaking my head. So, uh, yeah. everything in one day, personally, I told my wife that it's going to be uh, uh, energy consuming to put everything together in one day. But we had to come in some agreement and I agreed that we are going to do everything in one day due to uh, Corona. So, uh, and eventually, uh, one of the most challenging thing for my guys, uh, I realized that uh, the guys from abroad couldn't come over. So, uh, I needed to find a replacement uh, from my friends here in the Netherlands. So, uh, I asked shout out to Elisha and Cole who were willing to, you know, uh, stand behind me in, I think, how many weeks did they have? A month. Uh, I think was it a month? Yeah. I think it was less than a month. And mm -hmm. uh they were willing yeah. to support me and stand with me to make this a uh, wonderful and uh, uh the funny thing is that uh the clothes that the guys were going to wear, their suit, um for the two guys. For the Elisha two guys, and Elisha and Core, uh a day before the wedding uh they realized that uh elisha's uh suit color doesn't match, match the, rest. the rest of them so i was like what? <laughs> one day before the wedding eh? oh my god i remember i was in my bedroom and elisha was with my mom in the living room and they were discussing this and my brother with my kid brother and one day before the wedding right you're not even supposed to hear that yeah so <laughs> how do you fix that i was like Da, 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 da. <laughs> to make sure that my stress level stayed low and they they were planning taking a plane to uk to uk to get a new night to get a new suit i was like i am not hearing this but the most wonderful thing is that uh your cousin uh natalie who my cousin is from, in the from UK, uk she was coming she was oh, coming she to was the wedding to, yeah she was yeah. coming to the wedding so she had to go and get a new suit she ordered a suit from uh the website and it was like, if you ordered it before 12 p.m., they would uh, deliver it at home. So they had to, the deliverer had to bring it before she left to go to the airport. Yeah. And he brought it before she came, so left to the airport. So able to receive like, uh, everything uh, on time. Yeah. And uh, he was happy. We were happy. Everyone and happy. I, did they have to do the alteration that day? Your mom had to do some alteration yeah, uh, for him. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So that was that was my story with the guy. So after everything, the the wedding uh, was <laughs> a blast. It was really it was perfect a perfect day. wedding uh, for us. We yeah. couldn't have dreamed of such a wonderful wedding in Corona time. Like you know, it in beats Corona my mind. Time. We and had the perfect day. The perfect day. Yeah, for us. And the, the if funny you want to watch it, mm -hmm, it okay. it's on our channel. So. You can have a look at our traditional wedding as well as our white wedding. Our traditional wedding is in Chi in Ghanaian, but the white wedding is in. <laughs>